it's interesting because you've, I mean, you've always been healthy. I mean, we used to go to the gym together and, and you know, and I just know that you, we weren't drinking caffeine and you thought you had a healthy lifestyle. I was, you know, I was reading some of your recipes yeah. um, this morning and I had my big bowl of fruit there with my LSA on it, you know, freshly done and all that sort of stuff yeah. with my sheep's yogurt. And I was thinking, this is actually a bowl full of sugar. <laughs> Because, yeah. uh, you know, we because there's good sugars and bad sugars and we have this thing in our mind that we think, well, it's okay, I'm having fruit, so therefore it's okay. Well, and honey and dark chocolate and all those things yeah, that, we think, right. that we think are good sugars, but they all equate to quite a substantial amount of sugar in your diet. That's right. Look, fruit's fantastic, um, you know, in terms of the roughage and the, the, the you know, the fibre, the water and, the, of course, the nutrients, but it is full of sugar mm. and we're not designed to eat as much fruit as we eat today. Now, one or two people pieces of fruit a day is fantastic if it's whole fruit but unfortunately most people get their fruit through juice or dried fruit in mueslis yeah. and porridges and whatever granolas whatever um, and fruit salad is like a cocktail because you really don't know how many pieces of fruit you're eating a lot of the time a lot. yeah it's a lot yeah. it's a lot yeah. so um you know i get given a hard time oh you're anti-fruit well i'm not i eat fruit myself but i'm conscious of it you know, and I'm conscious of what kind of fruit that I'm eating. Low fructose fruits like berries and kiwi fruit are fantastic. Yeah, so it's actually choosing the fruits that are more sort of beneficial to you rather than just a filler as such. Yeah, and also treating fruit as a true treat, which yeah. is what I grew up with. You know, I grew up with fruit being a genuine treat. Yeah. Um, our grandparents grew up with it being a complete novelty. Um, there's this idea that we've always eaten fruit, and in fact it's not the case. We have not eaten as much fruit. Um, as we do now, and it's been much, it contained a lot less sugar than mm. it does today. Mm. And even in our grandparents' era, it contained a lot less sugar. So it's just something to bear in mind. Yeah. I'm not going to tell people, do not eat fruit. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, be mindful and make really conscious choices. When you eat a piece of fruit, it probably means that you probably won't be able to eat some dark chocolate later, in terms of your you know, sugar quotient. So who's this book for? Who, who's this going to help? Well, I can go by the kinds of people who read it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of men in their 50s and 60s, I think, who are at that age where they start to get some really serious health complaints. Yeah. And, you know, there's men who've lost uh, 20, 30, 40 kilos doing the program and doing nothing but quitting sugar the way that I suggest to do it, which is a quite a specific program. It does actually replace a lot of the, that need for a treat with other nutritious foods. Because you're really cutting it off. You actually said if you're going to sort of start yeah. on this, you've got to stop everything. Cold turkey for eight weeks. Yeah. So you can recalibrate your body and then your body will tell you. You'll get, you'll get back to natural appetite and your body will tell you how much sugar it needs. And it will tell you. You won't be like able to eat half a packet of Tim Tams anymore. It will say... And you'll be revolted well, by it. You, yeah, you probably get sick. But that's pretty tough. That's pretty hard going for eight weeks. How do people sort of not fall off the wagon during that time? Well, well, just to go back to the people that do the program, a lot of young women as well, so women in their 30s, I think, would be the other big group, or the, the main group, um, who are starting to feel the effects of their eating and their emotional eating. You know, so many women eat so much sugar, whether it's a muffin before work, you know, their mocha, their yeah. chai, their this and that, and, and it's to get keep their, you know, moving along, and of course, Hormones go through so many, you know, fluctuations, especially as you hit your late 30s, early 40s, and that's when women are really feeling that the sugar is just not good in their lives. But to go back to um, how do people deal with it? There's a bit of whinging in the first two to three weeks. I can imagine. Um, but the thing is, is I really try to make it palatable, like literally palatable, um, by replacing the sugar with fats. So. I'm encouraging eating halloumi, you know, discover halloumi and macadamia nuts and coconut oil. I make amazing chocolate just with coconut oil and cacao powder and a little bit of rice malt syrup which contains no fructose. And when people start eating this stuff, they don't really miss, well they don't miss the other stuff. And when I've given license to, alright, your friends are out for dinner, you're, you know, they're ordering dessert, order a plate of calamari or the cheese plate and it's absolutely fine. Trust me yeah. that this stuff is not going to make you put on weight. It just won't. And after a couple of weeks, they kind of believe it and keep going. Because it's a mindset because they still feel like they're actually eating something that they really want to eat. It's a treat. It's, yeah, it's a treat. And yeah. 
how many women have spent their entire lives saying, no, I can't eat that, I'm not allowed to have fat, I'm not allowed to have cheese, I've got to have low fat milk in my latte and all this kind of business. I'm like, no. And the other thing, of course, is I don't say no to coffee. You know, if you want to drink coffee during this period, absolutely fine. In fact, coffee can be quite good. It can be, um, it can nourish you, especially if you've got milk in it. It can mm. actually take the place of that need for a muffin or right. chocolate in yeah. the afternoon. Yeah, that's true. Because milk's actually naturally sweet and really satiating. It will fill you up, mm. you know. And then the other thing um, is you don't have to cut out alcohol. Now, that is not to say <laughs> that, you know, I'm suggesting that you drink um, more than one or two glasses at a time. But a dignified glass of wine with dinner is absolutely fine. But there's sugar. This is obviously after the eight weeks because there's sugar in no, wine. No, well, well, there is a little, but it's the fructose that becomes alcohol, that f ferments and, and becomes alcohol. So there's very little fructose in red wine. White wine's got a little bit more and champagne's got a little bit more than that. And beer is in fact fructose free. That's interesting. Mm.